uh, being distributed to him, or given to him, uh, to distribute, but we can't verify that. He went on, however, to consider that most of the money, which he said came from Britain, came from individual donations, probably to charities from mosques and community centres and the like, channelled through Pakistan, brought across the border in cash, given to commanders like himself to distribute amongst his, his men. He, he did point out that they don't need a huge amount of money to operate and survive. But these claims about Britain being the biggest donor did surprise us, but he, he, he said it a number of times to us that that was the case. Perhaps he's right. We know there has been a link to charity groups in the past, and I'm sure it will be looked at again. What about manpower, Stuart? Uh, Stuart do you get any sense that uh, British Muslims are out there fighting with the Taliban in Afghanistan? Not with this group. Um, we asked about it. They said they were all uh, from Afghanistan, though that they had connections to, to Pakistan. I suspect it's, it's something that we've heard about for many years. I have no direct evidence myself. I suspect it's more likely that young British men go to Pakistan and either radicalise there or trained and then sent up to do uh, their work in other places, perhaps back in Britain. As as I say, it's been talked about for many years, but not in this particular instance, and nothing that they said to us indicated that there were British people involved in this particular section of the Taliban. Now, Stuart, over here we are hearing much from largely the government about the Taliban being under pressure, on the verge of collapse. You've been out there with them. Does it seem like that? They're certainly under pressure, uh, particularly in Helmand and Kandahar. We know the special forces are carrying out large numbers of attacks, and they say they're being very successful in degrading the Taliban there. And I think that there is obviously some supporting evidence, in as much as that senior Taliban members are coming for meetings with the Afghan government, assisted, interestingly enough, uh, by the AS ISAF forces who are giving them protection so they can come to these meetings. And that would indicate that there is some sort of change of foot and that perhaps the leadership is thinking that things are getting difficult. However, I would say that while there is a free access across from Pakistan and the Pakistan Taliban remains as strong as it is, then it's difficult to see how you could say that there are on the verge of defeat because they're simply getting men across the border all the time. Once again, Stuart, uh, well done. Many thanks for joining us. Well, politicians have been telling us for years that British troops are dying in Afghanistan to make Britain safer. Since hostilities began in October 2001, a total of 341 British forces personnel have died there. Those 301 were killed as a result of hostile action. Rory Stewart is a Tory MP with extensive experience of the Middle East. He's argued publicly that it's impossible for Britain and its allies to build a sustainable Afghan state. What's worried me is these kind of lurches between black and white. Either we go in with huge amounts of troops or we just leave entirely. I believe we should be looking to try to contain and manage the situation rather than trying as we sometimes have in the past, to kind of occupy or garrison the country. It's very, very difficult to predict, but I do believe that it would be possible for us to draw down troops and to contribute to make Afghanistan more stable, prosperous, humane in 20, 30 years' time than it is today. But I certainly don't believe we're going to be able to magic a state out of the air. And I think, even in the very best case scenario, it's going to be a very risky and painful business. Well, those who suggest that it's time to leave Afghanistan have often been accused of a lack of patriotism or weak-kneed defeatism. Let's talk to the Labour politician and former Foreign Office Minister, Dr Kim Howells. He joins me from South Wales. And here with me at the Gherkin is Asghar Bukhari from the Muslim Public Affairs Committee. Gents, welcome to you both. Thanks for joining us. Dr Howells, you first. Uh, you once backed the war in Afghanistan. You've changed your mind. Why? Well, I was very much in favor of, uh, of going in to defeat al-Qaeda and to drive out the Taliban regime that had supported it. But the, the problem is about occupying that country, and we've been there for a very long time now. We don't have the resources to do it. We've been there for much longer than the Second World War lasted, and I don't think we're much further advanced than we were certainly in 2005-2006. And, uh, and I think now we've got to think very, very seriously about getting our troops out there um, sooner rather than later. And in that sense, do you think the Taliban, or certainly al-Qaeda, can't be defeated because they can always move somewhere else? They don't have to be in Afghanistan. 
Well, we know from the, uh, the, the Detroit bomber last Christmas, the guy who tried to blow up a plane over, over Detroit in the United States, that these terrorists can be trained almost anywhere. This guy was radicalized first in Nigeria, then in the United Kingdom, and then he was trained in Yemen. So I think we've got to be much more imaginative about how we tackle that threat of terrorism. And by the way, in the strategic security review, terrorism along with cyber war, cyber war attack, uh, they were identified as the most important of the threats uh, against this country at the moment. Askel, you're very well connected in the Muslim community. Do you know any British Muslims sending money to the Taliban? Would you send money? No, I don't think Muslims in this country are really sending money. I mean, to, you know, for the Taliban spokesman that you had on earlier, for him to say that his chief source of funding was Britain, it's very strange. I mean, why would you expose your own source of funding to, uh, you know, the country that uh, you're at war with and would obviously clamp down on it? So it's, to me, it's more propaganda value than anything else. And if that kind of mass scale funding was actually occurring in Britain, you would have seen some major arrests going on, um, you know, within the Muslim community. And, you know, it would, it would be kind of underground, but kind of common knowledge that doesn't happen. Uh, and it's not just funding. Obviously, he made the allegation about uh, there being, I don't know, sleepers here, my word, not yeah, his, yeah. but people ready to start insurgency yeah. here. Do you believe that? It, again, no. I think it's all part of the game, all part of the Taliban kind of projecting this uh, power uh, um, to to of you know the, the the people they're at war with and saying look you know we're we, you know we can do whatever we want you know and there's nothing you can do to stop us even in your country if we wanted to wage a, an attack we could we just have to click our fingers but in reality very very doubtful. Dr. Howells, do you buy into that uh, assessment? You used to be in, in government, of course. No, I don't buy entirely into that assessment. I I, th I think that we're we're facing a very very difficult situation as far as. Um, people inside this country who very much support what the Taliban are doing and who believe in an Islamic jihad. I've spoken to some people who've told me that what they want to create is a, is a kind of caliphate from Manila to Madrid. These are jihadist fanatics. And, uh, and I think that our intelligence services know about most of them, but they don't know about all of them. And that's why the, uh, the terrible events of July 2005 occurred and why so many innocent people were murdered in the United Kingdom. There are some very evil and dangerous people out there. Asko, you were shaking your head there, but clearly there are people in this country who would do us harm. It happened well, uh, yeah, July the yeah. 7th. Yes, but the problem is that the kind of loaded terminology that I think was being used is kind of a smokescreen for really why we're in this problem. The reason why anyone would support the Taliban or support anyone, uh, any kind of um, attack on this country is because they feel they're being invaded or uh, um, attacked over there abroad. So if we really honest about, uh, you know, stopping terrorism and stopping this type of thing, instead of just, you know, um, banging your chest and saying, you know, the evil jihadists, let's start to look at the real root cause of this problem, and that is our foreign policy. When we sort that foreign policy out and it brings justice to people right around the world rather than invading them and bombing them, then it will not act as a recruiting sergeant for terrorists. Dr. Howells, what about that point? OK, part of the, uh, the multicultural policy over the last 20 years in this country has been to invite uh, Muslim immigrants into Britain and then we go off and start bomb bombing Muslim countries. It's a recipe for pain, isn't it? Uh, Jeff, ask the gentleman to go and speak to the relatives and the loved ones of the 3,000 people who were murdered in 9-11. Nobody had invaded Afghanistan before then. They were, in, they were invaded in order to drive out that murderous sect Al-Qaeda and their Taliban supporters who off their own backs had gone and murdered all those people in New York. Now they want to get history straight here. It's, it, was, it wasn't the West's foreign policy. It was, it was uh, jihadist Islamists who believed that they wanted to kill infidels. That's what that was about you know, and they continue to believe that and they'll continue to, to murder people. Uh, Asghar, you're shaking your head but you can't deny there were Muslim bombers 
in the United States, Muslim bombers here. Oh, of course, but they, once again, that just goes back to my previous point. Of course they are. It's Muslims who are being attacked. It's Muslims who are taking up this type of action. But they're not being and attacked just, in this country. No, no, hold on. Let me just clarify. You know, it's, once again, it's amazing that you know, someone like this could even be in government and try to spin this yarn. All that anyone has to do is go on onto the internet, type in, you know, some of Bin Laden's speeches, and here he's, the, now he's the evil number one, right? He's the person who's, who's sending these people to attack us. And he clearly says, right, that I am attacking you because of what you did in, you know, from you know, in Palestine to, uh, 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 you know, even before that. Now, it's, it's very interesting that he's all, his hi version of history starts um, in Iraq or in Afghanistan. Well, sorry, our foreign policy uh, uh, in the Muslim world has been pretty ridiculous for a lot longer than that. And you need to start to tell the public the truth. Dr. Howells, our foreign policy is at the heart of this problem. What do you say? No, no. This gentleman, like so many others, is an apologist for Osama bin Laden and al-Qaeda. And uh, he, he, he ought to remember, I think, that th what this means in reality is that our streets are less safe, that there's the threat of murder and mayhem. And I would have thought that all British citizens would want to make our streets safer, not less safe, and would want to ensure that our children are not endangered in the future and the terrorists have no place in our democratic society. I would have thought that's a message you'd want to preach rather than apologizing for al-Qaeda and for its, uh, its dreadful philosophies. Asker, how do you feel when you see pictures of young British soldiers coming back injured, maimed, in Afghanistan, do you think good for my Muslim brothers? No, I, th I feel angry. I feel angry that some young guy had to die uh, uh, while the British public are still clueless about why that poor guy is dying out there in some stupid war that we're never going to be able to win. So you let, sympathize let me just kind of, with the British soldiers? Of course I do. And it, what's really unfair is that once again, it's just typical of a, of a you know a, these kind of security experts or government spokespeople who come out and say anyone who who tells you know the people that you know anything by the official line is some sort of secret al-qaeda you know operative or sympathizer or whatever you know it at the bottom at the end of the day if we really care about security in this country the british public are going to have to go to the root cause of this problem but, and you need to tell them the truth but do you not accept that we do have an enemy within in britain clearly we do because bombs have gone off people have been killed threats have been made of course we do but how how are you going to stop an enemy if you're not going to look at why that person became an enemy in the first place? If you're just going to lie to the public and say, it's nothing to do with us, we're perfect, it's just this evil enemy that just existed out of nowhere. Let me put that uh, point to Dr. Howells. What about that point, Dr. Howells? Rather than spending all this money, billions, uh, in Afghanistan on a goose chase, why don't we repatriate the cash and spend more on security systems here and better border controls? Well, I've been arguing about it, and I'm not, so, I'm not someone who's ever towed the party line on any of this. And uh, I said so when I was a minister and since then. And I think it's very, very important that we reassess our whole attitude towards terrorism. We have to educate people. We've got to make sure that we know who's coming in and out of this country. And we've got to ensure that there are not traitorous people inside this country who helped to kill our soldiers out in Afghanistan and who were prepared to murder people on the streets of Britain for some kind of jihadist philosophy. They are traitors and they're very dangerous people and they have to be tackled. That's the bottom line in all of this. Traitorous people, I think he's talking about members of your community. Absolutely, and once again, it's easy to bang your chest, use all sorts of loaded terms, but until you admit that anywhere in this world, whether they're Muslims or you bomb any country, if you do not treat people uh, with respect and have an ethical foreign policy, those people are going to start to, to fight back. Now, they may use terrorism, they may be evil, that may be wrong, but it still doesn't stop the root cause of the problem. And if you deny it, if you tell the British public it's nothing to do with foreign policy, they're just born evil, they follow an evil philosophy, it's not because of anything out there that we're doing it in the world, then we will never stop uh, um, terrorism within Britain or anywhere in the world. And it's time we start to tell the truth and just um, cut the... Don't yeah. say it. <laughs> Ask God Bukhari, many thanks for joining us. Dr Howells, many thanks for joining us from South Wales. I appreciate your time. Pleasure. And on our website you can watch all the reports by Alex Crawford and Stuart Ramsey and see also bonus online footage. There's also a series of articles including how Sky got access to the heart of the Taliban insurgency plus a photo gallery. That's at skynews.com slash Taliban.
Now, as you can see on the bottom of the screen, Manchester United released a statement about Wayne Rooney's future in the last few minutes. Sky's Ian Doverson joins me live from outside Old Hi. Trafford. Hi, Ian. What do we know? What are they saying? Uh, well, uh, you know, we've had a couple of dynamite statements over the last uh, couple of days, of course, from Sir Alex Ferguson and then from Wayne Rooney. I can tell you that this statement tonight is not of the dynamite uh, variety. But everybody, of course, uh, as you know, is interested in the minutiae even of this story. The fans are listening, so we'll read it out and tell you what's uh, happening. Uh, it suggests in this Rooney update, as it's called, and it's rather a hoarding statement, really. Uh, Manchester United released.